Okay, so in a previous video, I built the Sector 5 frame by HGLRC. And in this video, I'm hoping to go through the whole beta flight or technically the Speedy B configuration for this drone specifically. Now, where I'm at and what I want to hope to accomplish by telling you guys is uh, basically go from download to having my drone fully functional by just using the phone and using the Speedy B app. So, like I said, I've incorporated a lot of different things in this drone that I felt was necessary for you guys to know, or at least for me to know also and configure. And I'm hoping to do all these different things in this build in general. I have the app open already, but we're gonna go straight to the Play Store because I have Android. I don't have iOS. This is an iOS app also, but I'm using Android. So if you're using Android, this might be a little simpler for you. But you're gonna go straight to the Play Store and type in Speedy B or Speedy B app. You'll download it. It'll ask you to open it. So you'll open the app. All you have to do is pretty much set power to the drone. The flight controller will turn on, turn on its Bluetooth settings. The app will actually search for the drone in whichever way you want to. So whether that be Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or through a connection, and we're gonna be using Bluetooth. It'll just discover the drone through that. So let's try that right now. I'm gonna plug in the drone. Hopefully it'll discover the drone through the app and then we can start configuring straight from here. So we're gonna search the, for the drone using Bluetooth. And it found it very quickly. No problems at all. It found a whole bunch of different Bluetooth uh, devices around it, but you know, we're focused on the flight controller itself. But on the front page, you'll notice that it has a really intuitive UI. It's getting everything I'm doing with the drone so I can tilt the drone, it's moving. Giving me all of the different battery voltage, RSSI information. So you notice that on the Speedy B flight controller we have multiple UARTs. It's showing we have about six plus the VC. UART one is dedicated for TBS Crossfire. The GPS, also in here you can disable it enable it so everything under the ports tab is current and up to date the serial receiver under ur1 is proper and connected to the nano on my flight controller then i have ur6 for the gps everything on here seems right i don't think i have any other uarts that i use specifically for anything the leds don't take a uart so i'm not gonna mess with that right now but everything on that seems correct under the configurations tab is where you'll find all your motors mixer we're going to be using the quad x motors direction reverse i'm going to change that we're going to do motors out because that's how i want to do it the fpv camera angle seems about right i'm going to be flying at about 30 degrees so i'm going to keep that sector five and under receiver, you're going to be selecting whatever receiver that you install in the drone, whether that be DJI. If that's just DJI, you're going to be using the S-Bus receiver. But since I'm using Crossfire, I'm going to select the Crossfire receiver. I'm not going to select any of these because I don't specifically need them. But you have the option to configure all those if you want to strip support so i have that on there air mode looks good so everything pretty much looks like it comes set up in this once you hook it all up for the most part if anything is different on what you have just change it to what's on here and depending if you know what you're doing more or less then just change the settings to your liking i'm going to go to the batteries tab make sure these settings look like they should I don't really adjust these settings too much. I keep them as they are. More or less beta flight or speedy B, they configure properly, so I don't have to change anything here to any specific settings. 
fail safe okay so i've never really seen a fail safe tab specifically so this is different to me so once i want to set my fail safes i'll do that so gps rescue is going to be kind of sketchy in this drone because of how i have the gps set in here the gps is under the GoPro mount in here, which is going to be kind of hard to see in there, but it's under the GoPro mount right in there. And the way I have it, it's fairly flat. It's not too bad, to be honest, but I'm going to keep it as it is. I'm going to see if it actually works to be able to keep GPS hold or GPS rescue. So let's see if we can do that. I'm going to test that out, but I don't want to just have it drop. Not too mode. Okay, so there's not too much we have to change in this tab currently. I'll get into more of these settings later once I start to understand them more also, but currently right now I'm just gonna save and reboot that. And once it's saved and rebooted, we can move on to PID tuning. Everything you're gonna need to tune your PIDs and rates are on this page right here it looks like he has even more configurations than beta flight does now in a separate video i'll walk through pids and how i'm going to set up pids on this drone i'm going to check out the stock pids as they are because i'm curious how it's going to fly just in general you know the heavy weight on top of just the stock pids and all just the flight characteristics in general i'm curious how it's going to fly next we're going to move on to the receiver tab now, I'm using the TBS Crossfire, or the, T, uh, the Tango 2, actually, for my uh, receiver, or my transmitter. Welcome to Tango 2. Switch warning. So for this drone, you're going to want to, so where the receiver is inside the drone, you're going to want to bind your receiver before you complete the whole drone. So that's what I did. I bound it, so you'll see that it's connected right here at the green light. I'm noticing that on... The beta flight app it is actually taking inputs that's pretty cool real-time inputs on the app everything on here looks properly set so i'm going to keep everything on here the same now we have the modes tab so on the modes tab or actually on my tango 2 going across the tango 2 from left to right we have aux 1 2 3 and 4 all the way to the right for me, I like the arm with my right hand, so I set the auxiliary port to aux 4, and it's basically just a button up here. So the two switch button, you click that. Oh, that's really cool, I didn't notice that. So when you try and arm the drone from this position right here, and because it's set, it gives you a warning before it actually arms, whether you want to stay connected or disconnect. I'm curious, let's see what happens if, what happens in the countdown. So it just disconnects you from the app, okay. I have the arming set to aux four. The angle and horizon mode is set to aux three, which is right next to the arming button. That's where I like to have it. So if I need to turn it off or change the mode, I could just do that straight from this same hand. I have those set. So as soon as they get out to Maiden and I have uh, maybe my pits tuned and such, I'm going to try that GPS rescue mode and see what happens. I'm going to take you guys along with me also so you guys don't miss that too. So here's the motors tab. This is probably going to be the most interesting part of the whole video. So I'm really curious. I don't have any props on. You want to take your props off before you start this type of thing. But... I'm really curious because I'm pretty sure that I ha a couple of these motors are spinning. Actually, I think all these motors are probably spinning in the same direction if I'm not wrong. But we're going to see now. I'm going to turn up a couple of these motors, see if they're spinning. And they're going to try and change the motor direction. But right now, let's see if the motors can actually be ran from this. So props are off. I'm going to start spinning up a couple of these motors. Okay, all the motors are spinning. 
Motor 1 is spinning counterclockwise, motor 2 is spinning counterclockwise, motor 3 is spinning counterclockwise, and motor 4 is also spinning counterclockwise. So all the motors are spinning the same direction. This portion of the motor direction doesn't seem like it's working too right at the moment. The second portion does work where you see this large black box it'll ask you to go through this which is pretty cool, like once you turn this on, and I'll even show you right now. It's gonna count down, reset the motors, and it's gonna check which way the motors are running. Currently my motors are going, motor one is going Counterclockwise, actually I could just tell you right now, they're all going in the same direction. Now the motors I want to change are motors two and three, so that each motor is going with an outside, outside prop rotation. So I'm going to change motors two and three, I'm going to click them, and I'm going to press selected. It's going to stop the motors, reset them, recount down and then change the motors that I decided for them to change. And now, motor one is going counterclockwise, motor two is going clockwise, motor three is going clockwise, and motor four is going counterclockwise. So within the app, you press finish and they stop. So all within the app, I changed the motor direction, I didn't have to go into beta fly. I didn't have to go into the black box. I didn't have to go into any command line or anything. They gave me a really intuitive way of changing the motor direction right inside of your phone right here. So literally, you do not need a laptop to set up your drone. This app comes with so many different things. It's crazy. We now have the on-screen display. We could change everything on the on-screen display. It's really just as easy as dragging the icons across the screen. So let me set this up for you guys really fast. All right, so this is how I think I'm gonna keep it. So this is how I think I'm gonna keep my on-screen display. Trying to have as much real estate in the middle of the screen as possible. But I have as much information where I could find the drone, know what angle, uh, mode I'm in, know the receiver channel and everything about the drone that's necessary for a pilot to know at the very least, you know, battery cell voltage and such. I think this looks pretty clean, pretty good, but you can do literally all that you would do inside of beta flight right here on the on-screen display. I'm going to save this because I want my on-screen display to be saved. Nothing's going to happen. It won't reboot, but that's, it. So it's true and it has been proven. I set up this whole entire drone straight from the SpeedyB configurator with no issues, didn't have to take out my laptop, anything. If you're running this with Crossfire and DJI and such, the only portion that you're going to need your laptop for is the DJI portion. That's to activate your device and everything about the device that you're going to need. But for me, since I I already had my DJI unit set up and I took off the controller set uh, cords. I really don't need to set anything up because usually you need to set it up to activate it and such, but I have it activated and everything. So it should work in the goggles. The transmitter works. Everything about this drone works. So as you can see, the whole drone can be set up straight from the beta flight configurator. No issues. You can use just this simple one app to set up your whole FPV drone just from your phone. You don't need a laptop anymore or anything complicated. If you're using the SpeedyB flight controller, you can set up your whole drone straight from an app. Simple as that. No wires or anything. I appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned for the next video. The next video is going to be the maiden flight. And I'll make sure to link the video previously in the link or the description box below. 
so you guys can see the whole build if you'd like to see how I did it and you can follow along and do that yourself if you'd like so uh thanks for watching